Recently, one of my personal projects has used asynchronous sockets in Python. And while I was trying to work out how to do this, I noticed that there wasn't really one clear way according to you know the documentation or any guides I could find. It was actually really difficult to work out exactly what to do with it. So I thought I'd make this video uh, to you know try and help clear things up. You know, I did eventually find this method somewhere, but you know, I thought I would do something uh, to make things a little bit easier to find. Uh, so we're going to do, uh, if you saw the sort the plan folder there, we're going to be doing an asynchronous server socket and an asynchronous client socket. And we're going to be doing local servers and that. Obviously you would adapt this to whatever purposes you needed. I just find it's easier to do, you know, local host server client setups just for demonstration because we're going to be doing both of them in this video. So we're going to start with the server. So I'm going to create a new file called server.py and we're going to import a sync IO. Now the weird part about this is that we don't actually need to import sockets. Async IO just handles that all for us, which is quite nice. And then we're going to have our host, which is 127.0.0.1. That's our local host one. And the port, which could be anything. Uh, I'm going to put 9999 because I know for sure that's not taken. And we need to define two functions here. So we need to define a handle uh, echo. Yeah, I should say we're going to be building an echo uh, server client setup. So we're not going to be doing anything too complicated. And that's going to take a reader. Uh, and for those of you that care about types, I am actually going to put them in just so it makes things a bit easier to understand. So that's a stream reader. And then a writer. It's a good stream stream writer, not, a re not a, another reader. No, not that either. God damn it, dude. There you go. And that returns nothing. And we're going to leave that alone for now. We're going to come back to that. And we're going to start instead with async def run server. And that doesn't take anything. And that also returns none. And inside here, we're going to define our server has await asynco.startServer. Handle echo. So this is our, you know, uh, awaitable callable. So the callable you pass here will be called every time the server receives some data. So I believe it's whenever a client sends a message. I'm not sure if it triggers whenever a client connects. I don't think it does. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then we're going to do host and then port. And then async with server. We're going to do await server.serve forever. Um, you know. I think there is a start serving, but I don't know under what conditions you would stop it in that instance. So we're just going to do serve forever because it's easy enough. You can stop it with control C. That works just fine. And we're going to do if name uh, double equals main. So if this is the file we want to run, uh, loop equals async io dot new event loop. Uh, just a note, I'm on Python 3.10. If you're on Python 3.9 or 3.8, this would actually be get event loop. So just keep that in mind. And then we'll do loop.run until complete run server. It does actually make me wonder if uh, if run forever would work here, but whatever. I suppose it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're going to come back to our handle echo up here. So right now we've got our server. You know that we start the server. It has a you know it connects itself or it binds itself, I should say, to the host and the port. We have our callables to handle things. We serve forever. We need to actually define the method. We need to you know provide a logic for when that something is sent. So we're going to start by defining data equals none. You can define it as an empty string as if you want, I suppose. And then while data does not equal some quit condition, so in this case we're just going to do quit. Uh, obviously, in your case, it might be somewhat different here. And then we could do data await reader dot read, and then we're just going to pass 256. If you think your messages are going to be longer than 256 characters, and you can do something like I know 1024 uh, or 512 or something like that. If you yeah, if you're doing IRC, I think 1024 is the one to go for because you have the IRC message, which is 512, and you have tags as well. I believe that's how it works. If you couldn't tell, the project I've been working on is IRC based, so. Yay. Oh, uh, you know, I might as well leave that 1024 now. And then we're going to do message equals data dot decode. Uh, and that's only because we want to print, or actually, we need to get the address first. So to get the address of the person that sent the message, we can do writer dot get extra info peer name. It's a weird one, but that does get the address. And that gets the tuple. So you get the IP address 
and the port. Uh, so we do print. Uh, actually, what we can do is we could probably just do that, can't we? Just to make things a bit nicer. And then from uh, Adra, and then we can do our proper syntax now. So from address port, uh, and then we're going to do a message, and then we're going to pass in uh, the string representation, so we get our little uh, nice little quotation marks around it. So the only reason we're actually decoding the message here is to actually debug it. Obviously, if you want to, you know, do some manipulation on data, you might want to. If you want to check data just to see if it has anything in it, then you probably don't need to. As you can see here, the byte string does, you know, implement the comparability stuff. Uh, so you may or may not need to convert it. It kind of depends. I'm just doing it for example sakes. And then to actually write data back, we do writer dot write. Uh, data and again we're just echoing the data back so we're just you know passing data straight through that writes it to the uh, to the socket and that does it immediately so that's not async what you need to do after that though is do writer dot drain and this will wait to make sure that everything is clear before moving on to the next thing and then if we get you know our data to be quit then we do writer dot close uh, and again on the same sort of um, you know, logic. We have writer dot wait closed as well, which will wait until the the client is closed before actually shutting everything down. So this is our server implementation. Uh, it's a very simple server. Uh, again, as I say, it's an echo server. Not actually too hard to understand, I don't think. Um, which is quite nice. You know, async has a quite nice thing to it. So uh, yeah, we can move on to the client, which is a little bit different, but not actually too much different. So this is kind of where I spent most of my time trying to work this out. Uh, this new method that I found is actually a lot simpler than the one I ended up implementing in my uh, in my project, so I'm going to have to go back and change it. But we can import a synco again, and for the purposes of for our purposes, we're going to import time. You don't need to for socket things, but we're going to be sending messages to other times. So uh, yeah, we're just going to do that, and then we're going to have our host, which is the same one two seven point zero point zero point one. And then we're going to have our port, which is equal to 9999 once again. Uh, so we're just going to have our single um, awaitable here, which is run client. <clears throat> and we're going to define our readers and writers in a different way. We're going to use await asyncio or asyncio. I knew I'd do it at least once. God damn it. Uh, open connection host port. Uh, so this is kind of similar to socket.connect. And our start server uh, is uh, mainly similar to socket.bind uh, if you wanted direct comparables there. Uh, but yeah, our open connection, you know, we just send a connection request out to where we want to connect to and you know, we get in there like that. Then uh, once we've actually sent, uh, once we've actually connected, we're actually going to send a message directly. So we're going to say hello world. And then we're going to do await writer.drain once again. And then uh, we're going to do while true uh, data equals await reader dot read. And then we're going to have 1024 again. And then if not data raise exception, you can have your own custom exception if you want. Uh, but, but the reason we're doing this is because generally speaking, if a socket sends an empty data or if it sends empty data, uh, that means it's telling you to go away, basically. Uh, so we're just doing this uh, to say, you know, the socket is not necessarily closed, I guess, but, you know, it stopped communicating with the client. Um, or it could have closed. It does happen if the socket closes sometimes as well. Uh, and then we're just going to print uh, received, and we're going to do uh, uh, some some more log messages. And then data.decode. <coughs> And then we're going to send a, a representation in there. And we're going to leave that for now, uh, just to show off, you know, I'm actually going to get rid of the time for now because we don't need it just yet. But I want to show off kind of it working first, if I can move it over. There we go. So these are our two little things. We can bring up a terminal. We can actually split this terminal. And one of which we could do pi server.py, and the other of which we could do pi client.py. And when we connect to the client, uh, oh, we haven't actually finished yet. <laughs> That's my fault. We haven't actually run the thing yet. Uh, so if name equals main uh, loop equals async 
io dot new event loop and then loop uh, dot run until complete and don't forget about the get event loop if you're on a different version of python oops it is run client like that and now it will work there we go so you can see that we uh, received a message here from 127.0.0.1 port 56008 saying hello world and we have simply you know just sent that message back and the client has then received hello world on the other side so that is the basics of how you know this all works if you need a server implementation you do something like this if you need a client implementation you can do something like this i'm gonna do a little bit more uh for example sakes you know just to show it off a bit so on this side we are going to do we're actually going to set a number of messages to send so we're going to send uh 10 messages before we send the quit and we do need to import time now because we are going to import the time just to show things off a little bit better. Uh, and then while mess, oh sorry, if messages uh, is greater than zero because we already have the while true, so we don't want to do a for loop otherwise we'll end up blocking uh, our client socket. Uh, so wait, we're just gonna you know sleep for a bit. I think I'll sleep uh, one. And then we're going to write dot uh, write, uh, and then we're going to do time dot time. So we're going to send the time over to the server, and then we need to encode that. Uh, and then of course we need to do writer dot drain, uh, and then we you know because we sent a message, we need to play the number of messages. And then once the number of messages hit zero, we then write. Uh, quit so we actually send a quit command and then again we need to do our writer.drain and then I think actually we should probably shut the client down at that point as well so now that we've got all that in place we can run them again so we can run our server.py and we can run our client.py and we'll see we start sending messages based on the time and the server sends them back so when we you know receive a message on this end we receive a message on this end too and then this, you know, it's now sent a quit message. So the client has shut down because we told it to, and this is now no longer listening uh, for us. So, you know, we've closed the connection to the site. So actually, we probably don't need the break because this actually uh, literally closes the connection to the socket, which is kind of funny. Uh, I suppose it is on connect because it then kind of listens for data. And then runs it. Yeah, so this is actually gets called when you connect. Uh, I guess I was slightly wrong about that. So yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button to let me know. And maybe subscribe if you really enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so in two ways. The first of which, uh, scroll down a little bit and hit the join button to become a channel member. Or you can click the link in the description to become a patron. One pound a month on either and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about something else. I don't know. Uh, hopefully videos will go back to one a week. Um, I know I said two a week not too long ago, but the thesis and, you know, job applications and stuff is taking up a lot of time. And to be honest, I kind of want to be working on that as much as possible. So videos, one a week maximum for now, for maybe about a month and a half. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, but yeah, I will see you hopefully next Monday for the next video.